Thank you, Martha Lou. If you have your Bible this morning, Psalm chapter 100 is where we're going to be at. This morning, I want to preach on the Lord is good. This is the month of Thanksgiving month, right? November. And I am calling on our church this month, but more importantly, I'm calling on us as individuals to really praise the Lord. There are so many ways that we can praise the Lord, whether it's in our word, our song, our praise, or our testimony. But folks, I think we as a church need to do a better job of praising the Lord. Uh, we are too quiet. Sylvia, you said it good. If I can't do it here, then how can I do it out there? And so I think we need to work a little bit harder on doing it here and really letting the Lord know that we appreciate it, whether it's on our song. I remember years ago, I was sitting in church. We had a revival and the, the, the speaker was sitting on the front row. And I remember him saying it. And I was sitting over in the teen section and I was over here and I remember I could hear him over everybody. He didn't have a microphone or anything. And I thought, man, listen to that guy. He's singing louder than all of us. Then all of a sudden I said, wow, listen to that guy. He's singing louder than all of us. And it really touched me because I thought I should be able to sing out like that too. Yeah. And so sometimes I sing real loud, John. So sometimes you may hear me over there and I'm bellowing it out. But you know what? I figure I'm not singing for you. I'm singing for him. Amen. Right? We, we, uh, we can get excited about a lot of things. Yeah. We need to get excited about Jesus. Back when I was a kid, back in the 1980s, we got excited about professional wrestling, right? Hulk Hogan. I remember back in the day you'd turn on television and it was like 11 o'clock and cartoons were over and all of a sudden wrestling would come on and here comes Hulk Hogan. And, and, and you just saw him in the introduction because he never wrestled on television. I don't know if you all remember this or not, but pro wrestling, you kids that watch it today, it is not like that back then. The main people really didn't wrestle, and if they did, they wrestled like one of you out of the audience. We used to laugh. My dad used to laugh. He said, where'd they get that guy out of the audience? Because he'd come in, and he had the little wrestling trunks on, and he, and he was so skinny and so white, and he would get in the ring, and they would literally beat him up for about five minutes. I don't even know if he'd throw a punch. So you didn't get to watch very good matches, and then all of a sudden they'd have a special, you didn't have the pay-per-views like they do now, they had a special coming to the arena. And down in Cincinnati, it was the Riverfront Coliseum, and I remember it was right after, either it was right after or right before WrestleMania, and Hulk Hogan was going to wrestle Rowdy Roddy Piper, and I mean, you wanted to get tickets, and so I remember my dad taking me down to Riverfront Coliseum, and it was a different time, you got to understand this, because we was up in the balcony, and you know, up in the rafters, and I wanted to touch Hulk Hogan, because everybody wanted to touch Hulk Hogan, and I remember my dad said, I'm not going down there to touch Hulk Hogan, you go on down. All right. So a different time that we was going to grab me or nothing. So I make my way down, you know, and all of a sudden here comes Hulk Hogan's music. I am a real American. And he comes out and he's ripping his shirt and pointing. And it's like, OK, I'm going to try to reach and touch Hulk Hogan. And I remember that I didn't touch him. But there was this picture taken. And I remember just as well as anything, there's his hand reaching out, not quite to Hulk Hogan. And to this day, I tell you, that's my hand almost that close to Hulk Hogan. <laughs> you say, why in the world are you telling us this about Hulk Hogan? And here's what I'm going to tell you. Because when I ask you, why do you cheer for Hulk Hogan? Is it because he did this? Is it because he did this? Is it because he did this? And the answer is yes. That's why you cheered for him. You didn't cheer for him because he was a great person. I have no idea what kind of life he lived outside of the ring. It doesn't sound like he lived a very good life. I know that he never made any kind of difference in any kind of medical or help or anything like that. If Hulk Hogan hadn't lived, our world not, wouldn't necessarily have lost any major discovery or anything like that. All I know is this. We liked Hulk Hogan because he was cheering. He was doing all this stuff. And people said, I'm going to cheer with him. If I can cheer for somebody like Hulk Hogan simply because somebody tells me to or because I see everybody else doing it, then how much more should I be able to cheer for the Lord? How much more should I get excited about Jesus Christ? How much more should I want to enjoy serving him and fellowship and worshiping him? See, today I'm not here because I have to be. Today I'm here because I want to be. And I hope that's the way you look at things because when we look at it like that, it changes the way we worship. So many times we forget how good the Lord is. And that's what I'm talking about. The Lord is good. He is good. He's not bad. He's good. 
Have you ever had anybody do anything for you and you said, I don't know what to expect of it? You sound like it might be good, but you're not quite sure. When I first came here, Eileen calls me up, and I didn't know Eileen very well, and she, I was trying to move down here, and she said, hey, listen, somebody passed away that I know, and he's got some clothes, and she says, they're size 40, and I said, Eileen, I don't wear size 40, and she said, well, maybe you can wear them, and I'll be honest with you, I wear a 46, <laughs> a size 40 is like, you know, I don't know, maybe your size, how, how, how big are you, do you know? No, okay, he doesn't know, all right. So anyway, it's not my size. And honestly, I was like really thinking, I'm never gonna get this thing on. So I take Don Boyd with me, and Don probably wears about a size 40. And so I say, Don, we're going visitation. Eileen's got some clothes, and I don't think I can fit in any of them, but she makes it sound like it's gonna be so good, and I want to try these clothes on, because they're suit clothes. And you know, preachers like to wear suits. And so we get to the house, and, and I'm not expecting much, and I said, Don, you go ahead and try the coats on. I'll look and see if there's some shirts here or something that I can wear, because because I can't wear, and Don puts his coat on, and he's like, I don't think this is size 40, and it's hanging on him. And I said, hey, let me try that thing on. <laughs> and I put it on, it was like tailored for me. And I got real excited, and I told Eileen, I, she said, can you wear anything? I said, I can wear it all. <laughs> and I didn't want to be hoggish, that's a new word in our house, hoggish, so I didn't take all the pants, but she had been able to find all this stuff. And I'll be honest with you, here it is. I was not expecting a lot because I didn't think it was my size. And when I got there, it was such a great blessing because it was more than I could ever dreamed of. When we start talking about the Lord today, I want you to understand something. I think so many times people that don't know Jesus just aren't expecting enough out of knowing him. They think, all right, maybe it'll be good. There's a bunch of people here today sitting in this church. There's a bunch of people sitting in churches across America today and across the world. There must be something. But until you really know Christ, you do not really understand how good and how wonderful he is. So let's look at this this morning. Psalm chapter 100, verse number one. It says, a psalm of praise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations." probably one of the most famous psalms. Maybe you've memorized it or parts of it. Maybe you've heard some of these verses. But what a wonderful thing to look at the Lord today. I want to look at four ways that we can praise Him today. And I finally want to finish off on why. The first thing he says is very simple. Make a joyful noise. Now this is the verse of every, life verse of every person that's not a good singer, right? <laughs> if you don't know how to sing, if you say, I can't carry a tune. Then I always will say to them, we know what the Bible says. Make a joyful noise, as long as it's joyful. Yeah. It's all right, right? But he says, make a joyful noise. It talks about joy. Many times we can sing or speak out, and we do it because somebody else is doing it. You see somebody else singing, okay, I'll sing. You see somebody else saying it, so you say, oh, all right, I'll say that too. And yet... Though scripture says make a joyful noise unto the Lord, it's not dependent on whether somebody else is doing it or not. Today, your joy is not dependent on your husband, your wife, your kids, your family, the people that sit next to you. Your joy is really dependent on your relationship with Jesus. How you see the Lord today will make a difference on how you have happiness in your heart. If you see him and you say, well, he's there, then you may or may not have joy. He's doing something for someone. You may or not have joy. But when you say, I know he's mine and he's doing something for me, that'll put a smile on your face. When you can give a testimony, and this month we're going to do testimonies like we did every week. We're going to have somebody come up and give a testimony because I want them to share with you how that the Lord has put a smile on their face, how he's given them joy, how he's given them peace, how he's given them life so that we can be reminded, hey, listen, the Lord does that for me too. So he says, make a joyful noise. And it's not just in America, and it's not just anywhere. It's a call throughout all the lands. Christians everywhere need to be grateful to the Lord, and our voice should ring out with the kind of praise that he deserves. 
This morning as we're sitting here and whether we're singing in song or whether we're sharing a testimony or when we leave this place today, there ought to be a voice that comes from us that says, thank you, Lord. Are you here today? Yes. Thank you, Lord. I'm here today. Thank you that I'm not in a hospital. Thank you that I'm not in a nursing home. Thank you that I'm not left this world. Thank you that I can walk. Thank you that I can talk. Thank you that I can feel. Thank you for so many things. I can sing. I can praise. I can talk about that. We need to praise him with our mouths. The second thing is we need to serve the Lord with gladness. He says, come before his presence with singing. Can I tell you this morning, the Lord doesn't just want us to be here. He wants us to be here glad. You know that? Sometimes you say, what do you mean by glad? I mean this. (laughs) Right? You know, the worst thing a preacher can do is look out and everybody looks like this. I don't understand why the preacher is not too happy today. Well, I'll tell you, right? The Lord says, look at what I've done for you. Look at all the blessings I've given to you. If you're sitting here today and your children are sitting here with you, that's a blessing. If you're sitting here today and your mom and dad sitting here with you, that's a blessing. If you've got family, if you've got friends that are right here in your midst right now, that is a blessing because they could be somewhere else. You got to spend time with them today, and you got to spend time with them in the best place possible in the Lord's house, serving the Lord. Think about that for a second. He wants us to be here and he wants us to serve, but he wants us to be glad doing it. There is nothing worse than to see somebody that is at a place that they've been forced to go. Have you ever seen somebody that's been forced to go somewhere? Maybe you have kids today and you're forcing them to go to school and they don't look very happy when they go, right? Maybe they're crying all the way to the bus. No, I don't want to go to school today. I've been some places I didn't want to go. I'm not really about much of a play person. And I've been to see some plays before. Lori says, hey, you want to go see one of these plays? I said, no, I don't want to go see that play. I don't like it. I surely don't want to pay for it, all right? <laughs> when you see somebody who doesn't like being somewhere, they usually have a look about them that says, I'm a look, I'm not happy. And I'm afraid sometimes that people see the Lord's service as something that they were forced to do. Young people, I know maybe sometimes in getting up on a sunny morning, you can think of a lot more fun things you'd rather do, like sleep. Maybe there's adults that say, well, I've worked all day, I've worked all week, and this is my day off, this is my time to relax, this is whatever. You say, I'm going to come today, though. I'm hoping that maybe if you feel that way, by the time you get in here, you start seeing people, and you start seeing other smiling faces, and you start singing praises. And you start hearing the word of God and you start letting the Holy Spirit work that all of a sudden something changes and it's not because you're forced to be here and it's not because you feel like you're obligated to be here but because you want to be here because you're serving a living God because he's done so much for us. How can I not want to be around him? How can I not want to talk about him? I don't care what you think about anything in this world, the TV, the video games, the books, the bed, whatever it is, none of it will do as much for you as the Lord has done. Hey, adults, let's get it real today. No amount of sports, no amount of recreation, no amount of activities, none of that will do as much as the Lord has done for you. Why should we praise Him? Because He is good. That's why we praise Him. As the psalmist is writing this, he's telling us, enter His gates with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. I remember a time... Some went years ago. And they asked a man, hey, would you consider being a deacon? And his response was, I've already served my time. What a terrible way to look at it. I've already served my time. What is it? Jail sentence to you. <laughs> when the Lord calls us to serve, that's a blessing and it's an honor and it's a privilege. If you're called to serve today as a janitor, then be honored that you're a janitor for the Lord. If you're called to be the nursery worker that's changing diapers back there, be honored that you've been called to serve the Lord. If you've been called to spend all night long with teenagers, (laughs) then be honored that you've been called to serve the Lord. These are all things to be excited about. 
The psalmist has already taken care of whether you can or cannot seem to make a joyful noise, but he says, while you're serving, be happy. Be glad that you have the opportunity. The other day, we were trying to put a tent up out here for our picnic. You all probably didn't know that because there was no picnic tent. I got some of the smartest people I knew. I called on David and Jackie Murray. I called on Ben Moles. And I thought, man, I got some really smart people, smarter than me. And guess what? I found out they weren't no smarter than I was. <laughs> we have 14 people out here and we worked hard. And the tent didn't go up. It didn't get done. But I want to say something during that whole time. During that whole time. And there was a lot more people than just those three. Like I said, there's about 14 of during that whole time, I never heard anybody really get mad and angry. We were disappointed. We were aggravated. We couldn't get that tent up. But you know what? There was nobody that says, I can't believe I wasted my whole day of service here. Because we decided a long time ago, I think when we got there, this was for the church people. We wanted to do this to benefit the church. We wanted to do this to help out. We wanted this to be something special for God's people. And so our service, even though it didn't come out the way we wanted to, it allowed us to be together and spend some time. And we laughed a little bit and, and we, uh, a little bit, and we finally put it away. But you know what? We did it all together. And sometimes even when things don't go the way you want to, when you're doing the service for the Lord, you're glad because you're with other people that's doing that service along with you. Serve the Lord with gladness. If you're serving him, but you aren't glad, then reevaluate your service. I know that's hard to say, but I'm going to say it. If you're serving him and you're not glad with what you're doing, reevaluate your service. Because he's not just wanting us to do it. That's a Nike commercial. The Lord says it like this Whatsoever thy hand finds to do, do it with thy might. It's not just do it, it's do it with your might. Do it with what you have. We praise him today because he's called us to serve. The third thing we find in these verses is no. No, the Lord is God. For some, that just sounds like a repeat. We know he is. The Lord is God. That makes sense. But we have to look at the real words here. The word Lord, L-O-R-D, capitalized. When you see that, that's Jehovah. That's the God of promise. That's the God of Israel. And so as the psalmist is writing this, he said, we want you to know something. We want you to know that our God, Jehovah, the Lord, the one who has made a promise to us, the one that has guaranteed us that if we follow him, he's going to take us into the promised land, the one that has promised the Messiah to save us. That Lord, know this, he is God, Elohim, the supreme being. Every group in the Bible today saw their God as stronger, more powerful. Even today as a believer, as a Christian today, you're going to find some others that are going to say, well, we have our own gods and we have to ask a question. What makes Jesus so much different? What makes Jesus so much greater? Why is he supreme? Why is he who you serve today? Well, as we're reading this today, I think we find one big reason, because he's good. Because he's good. When I think about the Lord and I put him aside all these other things, was every other religion is about you and I or somebody trying to get to the point where that deity would respect us or love us or accept us. And then I get to the Lord Jesus Christ. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to those who believe on his name. Did you catch that? But as many as would receive him. When I think about Jesus and I say, why is he so great? Why should I honor him? Why should I praise him? You want me to give you the answer? Because no matter who I am, no matter how I am, he still loves me. Nothing I do changes that. But the fact that I know that about him should change the way I feel about him. It should make me love him and shout it out more than any other thing. Because no matter where I am in my life, I know that my Savior loves me, that he cares about me, that he's there for me. I praise him because my personal God, 
is all powerful. He says in that verse, and he has made us the creator who knows all my quirks because he's the one who created me to have those quirks. I praise him for loving me. And I want you to understand today, that is not me saying to the Lord today, this is me, take it or leave it. That's not what it works. We laugh at that, but there's some people, that's the way they, they view their relationship with the Lord. Here I am. This is where I'm coming. This is the way I'm staying. What a terrible way to look at things. When the Lord created me, you know what he saw? He saw the best me. What does he want from me today? He wants the best me. He doesn't want the best you to be me. He wants me to be the best me. He looks and says, okay, here's I created you. Here's how you started off. But what you do now, that's up to you. And it's up to you to depend on me, to rely on me, to trust in me, to learn about me, to serve me, to follow me. And if you do that, it'll make you the best you that you could ever hope to be. That's what the Lord wants from us. He knows who we are, but he also knows who the best we are. When he met the disciples, guess what? They weren't the best versions of themselves. They were tax collectors. They were fishermen. They were all kinds of problems. They bickered. They fought. They wanted to know who was the best. And yet by the time that Jesus died and into the book of Acts, guess what we find? We find all of a sudden the Spirit of God taking control and the best Peter and the best John and the best James and the best Thomas and the best Bartholomew, guess what? All of those guys became the best versions of themselves. Why? Because they recognized who Jesus was. And he made him the best version that they could be. I will praise him for the best version of me. It says we are his people. That personal God that leaves his promise that we have taken hold of. I am his. So let me praise him because of that. The world knows the fans of its sports from the way they yell, from the way they dress, from the actions they take. So church, let me ask you this morning this question. If the world saw us out somewhere, would they know we were a fan of Jesus? They might know we're a fan of the Bengals or the Browns or whatever other group. <laughs> He's going to be so glad when the Browns football season is over, right? But if the world can't see that I'm a fan of Jesus, I'm doing something wrong. If I'm not cheering him on the way I should. As we sing, as we pray, as we participate, these are all things that we can do to say, Lord, I am for you. You are mine. I'm reminded of Elijah on Mount Carmel as Baal is defeated. And all of a sudden, the people that were worshiping Baal just moments before started shouting, the Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God. And yet, what happens the next day? They went right back into it, didn't they? Elijah went on the run. Jezebel said, I'll kill him. How is it that a bunch of people, they didn't... The church you should have. The church you should know. The church you should be And I know that this morning as we're sitting here and talking about all these great things, the sheep of his pasture probably sounds like kind of a lower thing. Until we think about the pasture. The pasture is the place of safety. But it's only a place of safety for the sheep. In particular, his sheep. Sheep are kind of dumb sometimes. They tend to get out of the pen. They tend to run away far. They tend to get lost when they get away. And yet I am reminded of the story of the 90 and 9, how the Lord Jesus talks about the good shepherd that leaves the 90 and 9 in the safety of the pasture to find the one lost sheep. Maybe you're sitting here today and you're saying, 
Preacher, I'm listening to this and I feel like I've wandered away from the Lord. Well, I want to tell you something. The pasture is still there. And the shepherd is outside the pasture looking for you right now. And he's ready to bring you back home to a place of safety. Maybe you see that place of safety today and say, I want to get back there. Then in a few moments, we'll invite you to come down and pray with us. Talk to the Lord. You can pray with me or you can pray at this altar and say, Lord, I, I've wandered far away from you, but I'm coming home. I'm getting right back to where I need to be at with you. I praise him this morning for the safe place. The scripture says, enter his gates and his courts. It says when we entered in, we're not only allowed to entrance, but we're allowed to get close to the throne. I need to be thankful for that. I need to praise him for that. Have you ever been to a place where you said, I don't deserve to be here? When we think about our own life and we think about where we've been to and how far it's been that we've traveled away from the Lord or maybe the things we've done wrong in our life, we say, I don't maybe deserve this. And yet it's not because we deserve heaven. It's because he's died for us and he sacrificed so that we can have it. I think we all know somebody that's got something they don't deserve because somebody loved them, because somebody cared for them, because somebody had mercy. Our God is great today. Our Lord and Savior loved us, and in spite of what we didn't deserve, he said, I've opened up heaven to you, and I've opened up the gates, and I've opened up the throne room. How can we not be grateful? When I was doing children's ministry and Youth ministry, we used to sing this song. may break a smile yet. <laughs> All of this. Why? For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. We read this and we say, okay, we worship the Lord and we know he's good and we see why he's good, but what does this mean to me? Because this was written to the Jewish people back a long time ago. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting. Not just for them. Not just for the apostles. It is for you and me in 2018 and it is for our children and our grandchildren in the days and years to come. And his truth, and his truth, get that. What he's saying today, what we believe today, what we're living today, what we're realizing today, and his truth endureth to all generations. There are people out there throughout our time, and they've served other gods, they've served other human leaders, and they've served themselves. Some have done terrible things. They've lived selfish. They've made others to do things that weren't right. And yet when we really get down to all these praises and all these things, it comes down to the Lord is good. We have a God that could say, go on and do this, that would be evil. Or go on and do this, that would be evil. And yet that's not what he does. He says, do good. 
That doesn't mean that every Christian does good. But understand something. The Lord's not the one that's telling them to do evil. The Lord is good. Sometimes they get away from their, his truth. But what we read in these passages today is a God that is love and kindness. A God that wants a relationship with people. A God that says, I would rather die on a cross and see anyone perish. That's who we serve. That same truth, that same love, that same peace that he offered back in this psalm has been extended to us today. It's extended right now in 2018. This is his truth for everlasting generations. I will praise you, not just for today, my Lord. I will praise you for the future. The Lord is good. Now, when's the last time we told him that? Maybe this morning you're sitting here and you're saying, you know what, preacher? I'm listening to all this stuff, but round deep, I know one thing. I don't have a relationship with Jesus. I don't have a relationship with Christ. It does not mean anything until you know him. It's not enough that you're at church. It's not enough that you're having the Bible. It's not enough that you're friends with somebody that is. It's not enough that your husband or your wife or your children or your mom and dad. It has to be you. So here's the most important question I ask. If you've not listened to anything else, listen to this question right now. If you were to die today, where are you going to spend eternity? We have a good God, a good Lord that says, I want you and I want you today. Today, in just a moment, would you come and receive Christ? What about the rest of us that are saying, we know Christ is our Savior? And we're looking at our life and we say, here's this problem, here's this issue, here's this thing, here's this burden. And we want to blame the Lord. No, the Lord is good. Let's not blame the Lord for bad stuff. Let's turn to the Lord in our bad stuff. Let's trust in the Lord in our bad stuff. Let's lean on the Lord in our bad times. Instead of saying, I'll take care of it by myself or I'll take care of it with my friends or I'll listen to somebody else give me some advice. Let's go and turn to Jesus right now and say, Lord, I'm giving this to you because you're the only one that can take care of it. Maybe you're sitting there in the pasture and you're saying, I'm feeling really good today, preacher. Then I want to encourage you to do something too. I want you to praise the Lord today. I want you to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Thank you for little things and thank you for big things. Thank you for children that's sitting next to me or a spouse that's sitting next to me or a mom and dad sitting next to me. Thank you for a home that I live in or a job. Thank you for somebody that cares about me. Thank you for somebody that loves me today. But most of all, Jesus, thank you for you. Because without him, there would be no reason for any of us to be here today. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. And Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your promises found in Psalm chapter 100. Lord, you've told us to make a joyful noise, to serve you with gladness. Lord, we need the right kind of heart and the right kind of attitude to show the world our love for you. So Lord, help us to have that. Maybe there's day someone here that does not know you as their Savior. They say, what's the difference in serving Christ and serving anybody else? There's only one person that loved you enough to lay down their life. There's only one person that came here and knew exactly who you were with the intent that he could make the best you you could be. Lord, I pray for that one that needs to accept you as Savior today. I pray for those that's going through struggles in their life. And they need to turn it over to you, Lord, and they need to see your goodness and see your strength. Lord, I pray for us that you've been so good to. That as we're saying, Lord, help this and be with this and take care of this, that we don't forget to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for being good, for doing good to us. Lord, this is your invitation. Let us praise you and honor you today in it. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you stand with us this morning?